Good afternoon, everyone. It's Wednesday, October the 2nd, 2013, another month coming upon us. I want to go into the book of Jeremiah today, and I'm going to read Jeremiah chapter 8, uh, verse 4 through 12. And this is what it says. Say to them, this is what the Lord says. When people fall down, do they not get up? When someone turns away, do they not return? Why then have these people turned away? Why does Jerusalem always turn away? They cling to deceit. They refuse to return. I have listened attentively, but they do not say what is right. None of them repent of their wickedness, saying, What have I done? Each pursues their own course, like a horse charging into battle. Even the stork in the sky knows her appointed seasons. And the dove, the swift, and the thrush observe the time of their migration. But my people do not know the requirements of the Lord. How can you say we are wise? For we have the law of the Lord, when actually the lying pen of the scribes has handled it falsely. The walls will be put to shame. They will be dismayed and trapped. Since they have rejected the word of the Lord, what kind of wisdom do they have? Therefore, I will give their wives to other men and their fields to new owners. From the least to the greatest, all are greedy for gain. Prophets and priests alike all practice deceit. They dress the wound of my people as though it were not serious. Peace, peace, they say, when there is no peace. Are they ashamed of their detestable conduct? No, they have no shame at all. They do not even know how to blush, so they will fall among the fallen. They will be brought down when they are punished, says the Lord. And that's for your reading, Jeremiah 8, verses 4 through 12. And I read that because it was what was put in my spirit. I don't always listen intently as, as I should, but of course this Jeremiah just reminds me of uh, what we're going through with our government. And it made me think, what if what if God shut down on us? What if he turned completely away from us? Well, he's already said what he would do. You know, he would spew us out of, out of his mouth, and we don't want that. I can't imagine what it would be like not to be able to call on God. I know what, it's like, what it has been like in the past when I wasn't calling on him. And I thank God for the people who were doing intercessory prayer for me back in the day. Um, even now, sometimes I need stronger prayer warriors because I, I do get down, but I do get back up. Praise be to God. I give him all the credit. I am feeling a lot better. I was able to walk this morning after God woke me up. My daughter and I walked. I made it all the way down to the park and back up and back through Friedman and home. Whew. That was a long run. I bet I lost two ounces of sweat. You know, I, I, I'm about ready for a thong. I know this. I mean, look at me. Don't don't be envious of all the chocolate. But, you know, not making light of anything. But I praise God for, uh, for his healing, for his grace, for his mercy. Not just on my life, but all the lives that he touches. I would like to reach out to people when um, things like this happen. When you feel like there's no hope, where things are lost, there is one who knows. Who knows the end, who knows the past, who knows the present. And it's going to be okay. Sometimes you just have to take a deep breath and say, it's going to be okay. So today, take the time to pray for somebody else, even if you're not praying for yourself. Think about what it would be like if we didn't have God to call on, if we didn't have Jesus intercession for us to the Father. Because you can't get to the Father unless you go through the Son. Praise be to God. Thank you for all your concerns for me. The day's a good day. Today is a good day. And uh, that's all I have to say about that. Peace out, home skillets. Peace out.